Hey everyone, Yanni Vortex Advantage Ag here. Here at the hangar here with the Diamond DA40 getting ready to update some uh, Garmin G1000 basically firmware updates that have to be happening monthly and thought I would take a quick moment to talk about um, my visit up to Sirius Air two days ago up in Vermont. Uh, I was invited and had the pleasure of attending their formal launch up there and um, it went off really great. Uh, you know, I was again, very fortunate to join them for this uh, with about 50 or so other people, um, industry leaders, which was great to always kind of hang out with colleagues that are in the same industry with the same drive and passion for all the same things we at Vortex are striving to do and to be. Um, but I, you know, posted a couple comments about the drone and, and got a lot of, my phone was blowing up yesterday about, you know, what's it like? Uh, what do you think? Is it the next best thing? So I just thought I would take a, a few minutes and just go over my initial thoughts because uh, as you know, I'm always gonna shoot you straight and tell you what I think and um, you know, whether I'm gonna put my name and get behind a product or not. And I am very much yearning to get behind an American made product or a product that's on a pathway to become American made, uh, which series is definitely on that path. And I respect that. So, um, you know, here's my initial thoughts. And again, I didn't fly the drone. We did, we did have a demo. We did see it fly. I didn't get to delve too deeply into the software at all. Um, I will be getting one of these units very soon. Um, and I'll be posting more content about what I think and operational uh, as we fly uh, videos to just give you a better idea of what the drone's like so you can make your informed decision. Um, so initial thoughts. Um, you know, I was very impressed with the build quality. You know, I first walked through the front door and they had this, this series just on display there and it was just a massive drone uh very impressive in terms of its size and build quality you know i i do think this drone has a lot of similar characteristics to other major drone manufacturers on the market i think we all know who those are so i don't need to name them but um it definitely had some really solid build quality terrain system test okay which is um important to me um so it's a solid drone. I mean, carbon fiber arms, very secure hinges at the arm folding points, um, latch systems, latch mechanisms, um, you know, the frame, beefened up frame for to be able to carry this heavy payload of up to 40 gallons in the future. The, the drone we saw yesterday had a 30 gallon tank and they did have a, the, the prototype or first kind of iteration of the 40 gallon version as well. So I was able to see that and kind of put hands on it. Uh, so build quality was there. Um, design, it, it looks to be very well designed. Uh, it's got, you know, a omnidirectional style kind of LIDAR, I believe millimeter, millimeter wave radar on the top. And uh, it's got rearward facing radar and downward facing radar terrain following radar and obstacle avoidance radar, uh, as well as LIDAR, forward facing LIDAR. So I thought that was a, a really nice blend, you know, that other manufacturers have come out with as well. So I think that's kind of the industry norm moving forward. I think most people are gonna move to a multi-layered obstacle avoidance terrain following approach, which I think is good. Um, capacity. You know, I mean, 30, even 30 or 40 gallons just is ridiculous capacity. If we can get to a point where we're spraying at two gallons per acre, 15 to 20 acres per load, holy smokes, that's gonna be a big, a big game changer for a lot of people. This drone is not necessarily gonna fit every operation. You know, it is gonna have higher uh, generator needs in terms of KW capacity for what type of generator will power this drone. They are um, selling the kit with two chargers, which are 12 kW chargers each. So they require 12,000 watts each. Um, 
which is obviously if you total that up, 24,000 watts, you're going to need a 30 kW generator, I would say minimum to run this, this unit. Um, I don't think that's a deal killer for a lot of people. I think the guys with the truck tender setups um, are going to be, you know, that's going to be too big of a drone for a, a small truck mounted setup. And I think that's kind of common sense. But, uh, you know, guys that are running larger trailer operations, either with two drones or single large drone operations, this is going to slide nicely into that setup. Um, what else? Uh, you know, so charging capacity, 10, 11 minutes on the charge for, for battery charging. I think your standard kind of eight minute discharge time during flight. I think that's going to vary depending on what type of field, both shape and obstacle avoidance uh, demands that you put on the drone when you send it out into the field. How many obstacles does it have to avoid? What gallon per acre rate are you putting out? There's no doubt in my mind that this drone is going to stand out for those three to five plus gallon per acre applications. It's kind of, again, coming back to common sense. If you have a 40 gallon tank, the higher gallon per acre rate you're looking to put out, the more this drone is going to perform for you. However, I do think that on larger field, probably 2,500 foot plus runs, and, and really I'm leaning towards the higher end of that, you know, 3,500, 4,000, 5,000 foot runs, uh, this drone is going to excel even at two gallon per acre rate. Uh, you got to be able to give it time to get that, that product out. This has been the topic of discussion with all of the larger drones. Will you get out the full tank at two gallons per acre? And you'll hear from me directly over the next coming weeks when I get this drone in my hands, uh, whether or not we can do that and on what size of fields we were able to and what size, what size fields we were not. I think just like any other drone, shoot, with a T-50, I was, I was short loading that drone um, on the regular, you know, if I'm getting in smaller fields that have very irregular boundaries, uh, wooded boundaries with uh, a lot of obstacles in the center of the field, there was a lot of times where my guys would know after the first flight when it comes back with four or five gallons in the tank, they would short load it, short fill it um, to get the most efficiency out of the drone. I don't think that's going to change with any drone of this size. You're going to have to put it out into the fields and see what it does for you and make your determination on what works and what doesn't. So um, I am very hopeful that this is the American-made option that 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 uh, presents itself and uh, that we get Vortex can put our name behind. And, you know, we're always going to be honest with you guys and we're going to put forth, based on your needs, the best drone for your option. So, uh, you know, feel free to reach out. Uh, shoot us messages, ask us questions. Um, we do think that, uh, you know, the approach series is taking from the highest level, from the CEO, Josh, down. Uh, they really want to, you know, 30% of this drone today is manufactured in America. And they started with, I think was very wise to start with the most critical components first, flight controllers, you know, circuitry boards, uh, main, um, uh, ESC boards, all of that will be manufactured in Vermont. All of the software, the servers, that's all US based as well. So we've got no concerns about this overseas China transferring of data. That, that's off the table. They were smart to address that right from the get go. But to ramp a drone up like this to say that it's 100% stateside made, US made is, is not realistic from the get go. So. They're very transparent about that. Um, and other brands have been as well. Um, so we're hoping that they can fulfill their promise to be 50% US manufactured by the end of next year and then 100% by 2028. And I think that's a realistic goal. You know, I think the batteries are kind of the Achilles heel of every drone right now. And, uh, you know, those components are difficult to source here stateside. So that I believe will be their number one challenge. And I, I know it is, uh, or I believe it is. So anyway, I'm rambling on at this point, but I uh, just wanted to kind of put 
my initial thoughts out there to the community and uh you know vortex we always want to be your trusted source for information and as we get this drone in our hands over the next couple of weeks we will be posting content of us out in the field using it what we like about it what we think can improve and we'll let you guys decide let you guys come to us with questions let you guys come to us with recommendations on what testing to put it through so we can solve your problems in the field and that's our ultimate goal so um please subscribe to our channel so we can further put out more information and and keep it coming your way anyway yanni vortex advantage ag 8338 vortex is our toll-free number um y'all who have already been in contact with me know how to get a hold of me jm at vortex ag.com jm at v-o-r-t-e-x-a-g.com anyway have a great day guys i'm going to get to this updating right here and then we're going to go fly take it easy